Hi, I'm Lily Seiss, the founder of Peace From Within. I thought I'd share a little bit about my story. So as a little girl, there was a lot of great things about my childhood and things that I loved. Dancing, cartwheels, especially like when my friend and I would have a cartwheel routine and we'd like cartwheel in front of each other to Paula Abdul. I grew up in the 80s and the 90s. But I also felt really anxious. I felt impacted by movies that I'd see, the news that I would hear, the movie Witches, the parents died on their way to dinner or maybe on their way home in a car crash. And I just really thought that could happen to my parents. So often when my parents would go out, I was just felt like filled with, with thoughts that they're gonna die. Um, same thing when they would travel. Sometimes I have little rituals like that happened by accident of smelling my mom's sweaters and you know, crying, picturing my parents dying and then they stay alive. You know, or them flying and me going and saying prayers and feeling like maybe if I thought about it and loved them like hard enough that it would it would keep them safe. A lot of, um, I know a lot of you maybe can relate to that. And also I felt like different. I felt like my brain was, was like thinking of worst case scenario, but also it could really happen like it did happen. Um, so feeling different. I think that's why I also wanted to work with children because, well, I love children. I always wanted a baby. I always wanted to be a mom. I didn't really have any other career aspirations. But then I felt like a weirdo, so I kind of wanted to, to have that connection because I loved uh, like letting down our guard, having those heart-to-heart -heart conversations. So I became a school psychologist, and I loved being a school psychologist. I was in practice there for 12 years, but throughout my time as a school psychologist, I also had my own mental health struggles. In 2011, I had a panic attack driving on the freeway, and it felt like I had like anxiety pre-panic attack and then after, and it was like opened up a, a Pandora's box. Like it really made me doubt my mental stability. My panic attack involved derealization and depersonalization. I had no idea what that was, but it felt like unreality. The the world looked scary, like it looked the same, but it looked like a spooky underground world. Not underground, because it looked different, but like, it just felt, I felt unsafe. I felt afraid for my sanity. I felt this sense of doom. And I, before that, I did have some fear of insanity, fear of like mental illness. I watched Sybil as a little girl, and it's a movie with Sally Field, and she has multiple personalities. And it was so, I didn't understand it, and it was so, scary to me and sometimes people would say mental illness runs in our family and and I think how mental illness was portrayed in movies and not not just that movie but in other ones of people like in straitjackets or in mental hospitals I felt like oh my god that runs in my family and is that going to happen to me and when is that going to happen to me like is there going to be warning signs and but it wasn't that consuming because I didn't really feel like I had that much evidence to be that worried and I'd worry and then it would go. And then when I had a panic attack and I felt really weird, I was like, oh my God, shit. That is a possibility. And that was so incredibly scary. Let's make sure that never happens again. So I went to therapy my first time at 20. Whole lot of story about what was going on with there with eating disorders and uh, coping mechanisms and, and a lot of stuff there. But when I had that panic attack at, um, I guess like 29? I don't know how old I was. Oh my gosh, I just ramped up. Um, I wanted to make sure that never happened. I was so scared. So I was so on guard of like, well, maybe if I'm really vigilant, I'll, I'll make sure I never feel that way again. I'll make sure I can stop it. Um, I really focused on my sleep. You know, I read about sleep, <laughs> the importance of it. Uh, um, I don't want to make this like an hour long introduction. But all of this was really well-meaning about what I was gonna do to like make sure I never had a panic attack. But a huge thing was I was resisting panic attacks and everything that I did added more noise, more thinking, and it made my world smaller. Because I was already, I think, probably watching TV with blue light blocking glasses. And there's nothing wrong with that, but, but I just tried so hard when I didn't need to. I innocently got in my own way. Um, I'll share more about my panic attacks in the videos, but panic attacks and driving anxiety. So I had that panic attack driving on the freeway. And for seven years, I struggled with having panic attacks driving on the freeway. 
and oftentimes I'd have a panic attack and then, you know, the world would start looking scary. I would be so unbelievably scared and I'd pull over and I would have my ex-husband pick me up and usually my parents bring me back to my car. I was filled with such shame, especially being a school psychologist and and I would try things and a lot, some things did work, but nothing was deep and nothing was long lasting. And I would just try harder. Diet changes, med- you know, meditation, and oh, I was certified to teach meditation in schools, to teach mindfulness, to teach yoga to children. I tried yoga therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, which was, was helpful a bit, but there is something missing there, hypnosis. But I was in a state of derealization, like this lingering state of derealization when I went to my hypnosis session. So I was like so unbelievably scared. I just had probably dozens of supplements. Um, I would eliminate everything, bring things back in, um, very strict schedule, exercise, CBD, um, oh my gosh, so much stuff. Um, All different types of therapy, neurofeedback and somatic therapy. I don't even need to tell you everything. Um, And as I said, I'm not knocking any of those things, but what was missing was a deep understanding about how we work, was this this self-trust. I I just, and I maybe heard it, but I wasn't in the place to hear it because I think my mind was really noisy. I was really shaken up. I just thought of this because uh, it's kind of like our mind. You know, it can get shaken up and we can't think clearly. So I was really shaken up and I just add on more things, you know, and thought work and thinking positive and manifestation. I'd add on so much, but it was really hard for me to think clearly. I was so shaken up. And, uh, and then after something else didn't work, I'm sure having more panic attacks, I put something into the computer <laughs> and up pops Siri Taylor. And she was having like a seven day anxiety course where she sent you a, a different video each day. And I'm like, I'm gonna try it because I would try everything. But I heard something different. I heard that I wasn't broken. And I heard that maybe I was innocently overcomplicating it. And there was less for me to do. And I started having insights And so I think like, oh, it was also so welcome because I had a long night routine and I was so afraid of like not getting enough sleep because if I thought if I didn't get enough sleep, I would feel off. And if I felt off, I could go crazy. Um, I also had so much irritability when I was really anxious. I would sometimes yell in the car with my kids and just be filled with such hatred. Most nights I'd go to bed like, you have to do better. You're so horrible. Um, Then I'd wake up for my morning routine. So when I heard was here, I was like, there's less for me to do. Like I can relax. And I realized wisdom had my back every time, every panic attack. And I just saw them in a different light. Oh, maybe I didn't have to worry about them as much. Maybe I didn't have to prevent any of them. Another huge insight I had was about thoughts that like all of my thoughts are neutral because I also had intrusive thoughts. They freaked me out. I took my thoughts so seriously. And I thought if I felt something strongly, it must be true. So I started realizing I'm living in the feeling of my thinking. And I don't have to take my thinking so seriously. I don't have to analyze my thinking. And in fact, all this analyzing is just at, you know, shaking me up more, adding more, adding more, more confusion, more like, so there's less for me to do. And also that my thoughts would flow all on their own, that that's how we're designed, thoughts flow when we don't give them a lot of energy. Like, and so it was a huge thing of there's a lot less for me to do and that might be doing me doing less would like help me settle. Um, and I really stopped searching that day. Although I've definitely done a deep dive into the three principles cause I love it and I can hyper fixate, but I, and I love the community. I love the people that I've met. I've loved, that it has not only taken away my driving anxiety, my panic attacks. I didn't go into it for health anxiety because I just was, I was very much in like the paleo primal healthy world of like toxins and bad things. And here's one way to live. And this is what it is. Not that there's one way I, that this is an overgeneralization, but my health anxiety fell away. Didn't even return during the pandemic. Like I can love without fear. I can have a brain that says stuff and I don't have to take it so seriously. So it really gave me a second chance at life. 
I mean, my story could be much longer as all of your stories could be so much longer, but like it brought me back home and also to a home, this deep knowing that I'm okay, that it is okay. And I'm so excited to share that with you. So that's a little bit about me and then I'm going to get into it. <laughs> 